Hi, welcome to Alley Picked. Today is one of those days where filming and editing get in the way of my actual work. I'm in a hurry and I have work to do. I don't really want to film, but I thought it would be a good time to go over some basic woodworking techniques. One of the tools that I use, now it's not too often, but it is important to know how to use is a dowel jig or a doweling jig. Not that kind of jig. This one here is probably 20 years old. There's different types that you can get. In fact, I did have a hard time even finding this one on Amazon, but the process is basically the same. I'm gonna show you how I use this in order to piece together smaller boards to make a larger tabletop. Since this is a basic woodworking video, I should probably talk about the dowel itself. This is a dowel rod. They come in different types of wood. The most common is beech, poplar, pine, oak, and even walnut. For the basic joining of two boards, I just use the cheapest. You can buy dowel pegs pre-cut with flutes or grooves in them, or you can just make your own. Whenever I come across these at a garage sale, an estate sale, or I just take apart furniture and I find them not glued in, I store them in a container for later use. To make your own, simply measure and cut the length you need. Then using coarse sandpaper, sand both ends at an angle. Then sand one side flat the whole length of the dowel. This flat side allows for the glue in the hole to escape, so you're able to push the dowel all the way into the holes. This is the doweling jig. On the back side is this threaded rod which clamps the piece of wood in place. It can be adjusted to hold any thickness of wood up to several inches. There are a couple of other adjustments on this device. This is for the thickness of the wood. This is for the size of the dowel you're using. On this bar, there's ruler markings. This gets adjusted to the size of the dowel you choose. In my case, I'll be gluing together three quarter of an inch thick boards. So I'll use three eighths of an inch dowels. And then set this gauge to three eighths of an inch, which will put me right in the center of the wood. It'll make more sense in a minute when you see the process in action. Let's glue together three boards using dowel pegs to help strengthen the joint. First, make sure that all the edges are straight and butt up against each other without any gaps. Place the boards next to each other where you want them to be glued together. Draw a line across the point where the boards meet. Do this for every place you want to put a dowel. I'm spacing mine 10 inches apart. I don't know what the general rule is, but depending on the thickness and width of the wood, I may space my dowels closer or further apart. Once I have all the lines, I number the top of each board so I don't mix them up. On the top of the jig, there is this center line. This is very important. The jig gets clamped to all the boards in the same direction with the center line perfectly aligned with each of the pencil marks on the top of each board. Another important thing that you have to prepare for is the depth of the cut. I'm going to drill into the edge of the board to a depth of about 1 16th of an inch deeper than half the length of the dowel peg. In other words, you want to drill deep enough so that the dowel is completely in the wood. I like to put a piece of tape on the drill bit to make sure I'm drilling it to the proper depth. The last thing you want to have happen is to apply all the glue, put all the dowels in, and then find out that the holes aren't deep enough. And then you've got to take it all apart, re-drill. Very messy. I would know. With all the holes drilled on the right side of the first board, I begin to drill on the left side of the middle board, followed by the right side of the middle board. Lastly, I'll drill holes in the left side of the last or the third board. Once all the holes are drilled, it's time to apply the glue to all the edges and inside the holes, and on the dowels too. I use a mallet to pound them down. You don't want to hit them so hard that they break or split. Now we can press all the boards together and clamp them tight. The top of the boards where they come together should be even. If they are slightly uneven, this can be sanded. In my case, the boards are veneered, so I'm not able to sand them down too much. Let that dry overnight. Now I'm going to cut this to length. When using a circular saw on plywood, 
apply some painters or masking tape to keep the end grain splinters from flaring up as you cut. To hide the plywood edges, I'm gluing a thin strip of mahogany wood. You can always buy a roll of iron-on veneer to accomplish the same thing. Here's a trick if you don't have a clamp long enough. Simply use two clamps, one connected to the other. The top surface is slightly uneven. It is difficult to get a perfect result using a doweling jig. To fix this, I'll just sand them evenly. I can't remove too much wood or I'll end up sanding through the veneer top. Next, I'll apply a dark walnut stain. Once dried, I can install this for its intended purpose, which is a tabletop for a coffee station in a meeting room in the basement of my church. I'll eventually give this several coats of polyurethane for a nice finished look. So I hope you enjoyed this basic woodworking video. If this is something you'd like to see more of, please put it in the comments and make a suggestion on the topic that you're interested in. Thanks for watching Alley Picked. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.